Hey everyone. Uh, I know we just finished up our, uh, our lesson time, but we're going to be transitioning into a time of something called scripture engagement. As you can tell, I've got a guest with us right now. His name is Dr. Phil Collins. He was a professor of Emily's back when she went to school in Northern Indiana at Taylor university. Um, he does uh, this thing called scripture engagement that, that allows us to be able to uh, dive into scripture in ways that we might not have thought before. And actually I'm just going to hand this right over to him and he'll be able to take us through this process. Very good. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, thank you all you guys. It's uh, good to be with you. Uh, I, my background actually before I became a professor was uh, in youth ministry. I spent uh, 16 years in youth ministry, both with an organization called Youth for Christ and at a church doing what Daniel is doing. So I feel very comfortable being with you. Wish I was there instead of doing this whole crazy thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited to be with you to tell you a little bit about scripture engagement, but mostly to give you a scripture engagement experience. Scripture engagement is not a phrase you've probably heard before, but uh, it's nothing new. Uh, uh, the idea is uh, when we come to scripture, how are we supposed to come to the Bible? You probably have been told, like I was told, uh, and I've told many people that the way to grow as a Christian is to pray and read your Bible. That's kind of the core of it. Uh, as you pray and, and read scripture, you meet God and are changed by, by God. And, and I really believe that that's true. But uh, all of my years of youth ministry and then a lot of years as a professor, I, I really didn't teach people how to read the Bible. And that's kind of one, what's captured my interest these last 10 years or so is how do you teach somebody to come to the Bible, to be changed spiritually, to grow spiritually? Uh, and really, why do we come to the Bible? And I think the reason we come to the Bible is because we want to meet God. We want to know God, to be changed by Him. So uh, how do I read the Bible to do that? Well, there's a lot of ways to read the Bible. Uh, you can read it for just information, or you can read it because you feel guilty and, you know, I did something wrong, so I better read my Bible and make up for it, or, uh, or just all sorts of different reasons why we come to the Bible. But I want to come to the Bible now to meet Jesus and to allow him to change me. So I read the Bible relationally. Uh, I read it to know him and to be changed by him, uh, to be loved by him. Uh, and and it, it's very motivating for me to come to scripture every day uh, to really uh, meet Christ. Uh, I started reading the Bible when I was your age. Uh, I was about 12 or 13. Uh, so for some of the younger ones of you, and I, I just did it as a bet to myself to see if I could do it. I wanted to read through the entire Bible, and I actually did. It took me a couple of years, and then I put it down. I was like, well, I read that book. I don't read, I'd don't never read a book twice in my life. Uh, but I kept coming back to it and been, been reading ever since. And it's, it really has. It's been the most important thing to me in my life to change me spiritually, to help me to meet God. So those two things, praying and reading your Bible, I always separated those out. First, I pray, I talk to God, then I read the Bible, he talks to me. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I've learned in the last 10 years is to combine those two. Uh, instead of praying and reading, I, uh, I pray my Bible. And I want to give you an experience with the doing that. Uh, you're going to need to turn to Colossians chapter 1, and it will be important that you actually have that up on your screen somewhere or pull out a Bible and look at that passage. We're going to pray Colossians 1, 9 through 14. So the idea of praying scripture is you read a little bit, and then instead of just trying to think what that means, which is a very important, but uh, to turn it around immediately and talk to God about it. So that's what I'm going to lead us through. I'm going to read just a little bit of the passage. I'm going to pray, give you an example of the way I might pray that passage. And then I'm going to pause and let you pray. And then we'll do that for a few verses. And then I'll stop and I'll switch things up. Does that make sense? Read a little bit. Turn that into a prayer right away to God. I'll pause. You pray, whatever you want to pray. Mine is just an example, not better than anybody else's. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So Colossians uh, 1. Uh, verse 9. I'm just going to read the first part of verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. All right, so I actually want to talk about that to, to the Lord. All right, so Lord God, uh, Paul is saying to 
to the Colossians that he's been praying for them uh, and he hasn't stopped praying for them. And, and I recognize that there are people in my life that have prayed for me for years, for my grandparents, my parents, professors when I was in college, ministry people. And I just want to thank you for those people that have prayed for me for years. There's probably not a Christian alive that hasn't been prayed for by somebody else. And, and I'm grateful for those people in my life. And I want to be a person who prays for other people. So now you pray. Reread that uh, first half of verse 9 and, and you pray. Okay, I'm going to keep reading in verse 9. Uh, we've not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Okay? He's asking for the Colossians to be filled with the knowledge of His will, God's will, through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Okay, so I'm going to pray. I'm talking about my first prayers, this first part is about me. You make it about you, okay? Father God, we, uh, we see here that you give all wisdom and understanding, all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I want to say that uh, that's my request from you. I want wisdom and understanding in a spiritual way so that I would know your will. I want to know your will, God. Your will is good and perfect and changes everything. So I, I ask for that kind of wisdom. All right. Now, now you pray and ask for that wisdom for yourself. Okay, verse 10. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. All right, let me pray about that a little bit for myself. Lord God, I want to live a life worthy of you. I want to please you in every way. Now, I know from reading your word that I don't please you so that you love me, but you love me, so I want to please you. Help me to get that in the right order. So often I think I have to be good enough, uh, please you, and then you'll love me. But, uh, but you've loved me long before I've ever tried to please you. So, so help me to go about that business and, and, and be in your word to, to know you and live a life worthy of you. All right? You, you pray that. First, first part of verse 10. All right, the rest of verse 10. Bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. All right, let's pray about that. Lord God, uh, bearing fruit in every good work reminds me of the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, and so on. And, and I want that. Uh, I want to bear fruit in, in all of my work. Uh, and I ask for your help doing that. Uh, and I really want to grow in my knowledge of you. I know I don't know everything about you, I never will, but the more I learn about you, the more I love you, the more I'm grateful for all you've done. So, so help me to know who you are, Lord. All right, you try. All right, now starting in verse 11, we're gonna start changing it. I've been praying for myself and I've encouraged you to pray for yourself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pray for the First Christian Church of Dodge City, all right? You can pray for your youth group or you can pray for the whole church. So we're gonna turn the rest of this uh, passage in Colossians into a prayer, not for ourselves, but into a prayer for, for your church, okay? So verse 11, it says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, uh, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Okay, so let's pray this over, over, um, over your church. Lord God, I pray 
that the youth group there in Dodge City would be strengthened. Uh, even though we're separated and this whole COVID-19 thing is going on, uh, your power, uh, according to your glorious might, uh, can give us great endurance and patience. Um, and we can be joyful in this process. So I ask for that uh, for the first, first church in Dodge City and for the youth group especially. Okay, now you use some of the words from this passage. You, you pray for your own church. So important to be praying for your church and for Daniel and Emily and for all the leadership there. And then verse 13, it says, for he, uh, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. All right, let me pray this over the church. Lord God, you have rescued the people of First Church from the dominion of darkness. We've all seen darkness. We know evil in our lives. We've seen it around us. And I pray that you would again rescue First Church uh, from darkness. Keep the darkness away, Lord God, and, uh, and bring us into the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, uh, because you love him so much. Right? You pray for your church using these, these words in verse 13. And then verse 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Lord God, thank you that you have redeemed us, uh, that you care for us. Uh, we pray as a people that are redeemed, that have gathered together there in Dodge City, that uh, that we had would have a sense of your forgiveness. So often we're slow to forgive ourselves, slow to forgive other people. I pray that that would be a sign of uh, the first church in Dodge City, that they would be uh, people that know that they're forgiven and that they're redeemed. And I ask for your blessing. I come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so isn't that a little different? Didn't that take your prayers in different ways? So I'm an old geezer, obviously, and uh, I've been praying for many years. And I honestly, my prayers are very similar if just left up to my own. They're not very deep and they're not very broad. But when I pray scripture, I find myself praying about things that I wouldn't normally pray about, and I pray about them with more depth. So I'd encourage you, uh, one of the ways that you can engage scripture is to pray scripture. Now, there's a lot of ways. Maybe you didn't connect with this one. Uh, there's a lot of ways to engage scripture. I'd encourage you to Google Scripture Engagement Bible Gateway. And there are all sorts of articles, 50 articles and uh, some videos that are on that website that uh, people from Taylor University, the Center for Scripture Engagement, have written to help you engage scripture. There's a lot of different ways to do that. This is just one. So just wanted to give you that experience and I uh, hope that's been, been helpful. Daniel, yeah, thank anything you. else? Dude, thank you so much for that. Uh, guys, we're, we're thankful for, for people like Phil and we're thankful that we have this opportunity that we can worship together, that we can, uh, we can worship through praying and through reading scripture and engaging with it well. Um, so we're all so thankful for you, Phil. Uh, oh, for that. Glad to be here with you all. For sure.